comes out. Um, my am the most I kind of was excited for was the the change in Joker. That's for sure. Joker was a big definitely thing. is an improvement. I mean, I wish that was saying more. You know what I mean? But it's still a good improvement, and it's something we definitely needed. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, there's. Yeah, we'll see how he acts this this role, um, a for little sure. bit more differently probably for sure than what they were doing with the suicide squad stuff because they're they're definitely not going the tattooed face no Joker i mean we so. talked about that before and how that was really the biggest problem with it wasn't um it wasn't the fact that uh leto was bad in the role he was given a bad role to act um you know what i mean they wrote the joker very poorly in suicide squad i think and didn't really get any better in the preceding following movies, you know what I mean? I will say I like this take from Leto better. The voice is a lot better. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not striking, but that's okay because it's also not grating like the last one was. Um, most of what I, I believe from the uh, trailer is that he's doing basically what we bitched at DC to, to, to do the entire years before releasing the original justice league which was to actually give the characters who are coming in without their own movie supporting context of story so he's giving cyborg his full backstory he's giving uh the flash his full backstory it looks like in a uh -huh. which is why it's going to be four hours long and so for me it's just screaming like oh yeah we actually did need three or four more movies to make a good justice league <laughs> But yeah. I mean, if they, if they would have done that before, where right. they just, like you said, focus more on Flash and focus because we've already kind of got a little bit of uh, Superman, we got a little bit of Wonder Woman. Once again, there were um, there are still problems, right? There are still things that are not <clears throat> going to be changed by this version, no matter what, because it's in the writing. One is going to be the return of Superman. It's just poor writing to kill your character in one movie and bring him back in the very next movie. It doesn't mm -hmm. really add a very heavy depth of consequence rate like oh well superman dies we'll just bring him back again next yeah time. we'll definitely we'll <laughs> definitely have to see how he's gonna do it this I, round i think if they um, went with the more classic superman revival tale than what they did in the last justice league it'll be better but once mm -hmm. or actually it wasn't he, yeah no it was but uh i will say that at least discounting the things that i already knew was not going to be necessarily liked for me everything looks pretty good like nothing looks bad so far get some dark side action <laughs> ah, dark si movie. my thing with dark side is i feel like right now he's that it's my problem with the filmography all the stuff we see him, like, so dark i can't get a good look at him uh -huh. like half of his body is like wreathed in shadow um yeah there's been yeah a couple scenes so um I you know I don't expect him to be in the movie too much this. I don't around, either, which is both. I just see him like he's kind of like that thing where you know where they had Thanos, where he was just kind of in the background. Yeah, and... which. Is <laughs> Sorry, I should turn up the volume for these. My big one for this one is definitely Stephen Wolf's redesign is not great for me. Mostly, I think, because of comic accuracy. Like it was already not that great in the last one, as far mm -hmm. as comic accuracy for Stephen Wolf. Or stepping with whatever. This time he just looks like uh, I don't know. We were I was talking with somebody about it the other day. He looks like he just like ate a ton of metal, and just and said fuck it. <laughs> it's, it's like I I honestly don't even mind his physical design as much as the excessive amount of like random metallic armor everywhere on his uh -huh. body. Uh, the Amazonians look good. Cyborg looks pretty good. I mean, we're always gonna have to wait and to see the full thing, right, and see how it goes. Luckily, yeah. there's, like, there's very little danger of this being, like, the best stuff of the film. Mostly because of how long it is. You know what I mean? Like, mm. in four hours, this can't be all the good shots. So that's one good thing I really like, is that yeah. this is definitely not, like, the best the movie has to offer. It's just, like... Yeah, there's hopefully there's still a lot, yeah, that they have to offer. So, uh, again, I hope they do good with it. You know, the last I, like I said, like... I'll see how they do, because... I think we. I, don't I just know don't know what they're gonna do though. Even uh, after it'll this, never though. go anywhere. It's not going anywhere. That's, DC, that's it's dead said, in the water. So like... The the truth is, Snyder doesn't sell well. It just doesn't. Like it's not mm -hmm. his fault or anybody else's. Like even his other movies, right? 
that he's done for DC or whatever uh, are not blockbuster movies, ending movies. I can't tell. Uh-huh. The quality Ooh, is not doing well. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I guess how it goes. I mean, we, we we get it this year, pretty much here at the beginning of March, which is coming up pretty fast here. I think I'm about two weeks or a week here. Um, we'll be getting that one here. But yeah, well, again, we'll check it out, see how yeah, it is. I, well, um, and that's that's all I have to stress to people is like I'm not gonna pass. Ju- I don't pass judgments on movies before I see them. Like I don't know if this will be any good. I go in knowing what a director is like and whether or not I like their stuff. But that's not a good indicator either because directors aren't always going to put out the same product, right? Like, directors like to change and experiment as well. They might have some hallmark signals of their directing, but uh, I feel like you, sh- you also shouldn't, like, not watch a movie because a certain director has directed it, right? Uh-huh. And my, big, my bigger issue is, once again, the mentality that comes off of these kind of things and it goes both ways, right? So no matter whether or not this is a good or bad show, the Snyder bots are going to say it's amazing. They're going to say it's the best thing ever made. And the people who don't like DC are going to say it's awful, no matter how good it is. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem, is this blind, like, ob- non-objectivism towards these titles, right? Like, because it's Marvel, it's going to be better to- than DC. Well, that's just not true, right? Like, Thor 2 is not very good. Yeah, uh, Thor 2 wasn't its best. Iron Man 3 wasn't great. Right, there are bad movies that um, now... I mean, I, they still did good and, like, made their money, but they just... Right, they're like, just not that great. Was, like, And once again, they, they made money, still. but for a Marvel movie, they didn't make as much money as a Marvel movie typically makes. Yeah, those ones were, yeah, one of their probably more lower-end yeah. <laughs> uh, movies. But, um, yeah, you, we'll just, again, you want to just pass our judgment when it finally comes yep. and see how it goes. Like and, I said, I, I um, hope it's really good. Because then yeah, I'll have too. more good superhero shit to watch, right? Like, four yeah. hours of good yeah. superhero stuff? I couldn't ask for more. And mm-hmm. I will say, at the very least, some of it uh, is is definitely stuff that's, like, going to be good, right? Like, the Flash stuff with uh, Iris is just going to be good. It's really hard to fuck that up. Mm-hmm. It's a well-established story. Watching the Flash run around is fun. You know what I mean? It's like doing a quick silver scene in X-Men. It's just going to work well. Um, but yeah, the, the things I'm, that's, and I think that's the thing is I'm honestly not dreading anything coming from this or like have any expectations. I just expect it to very much be a Snyder film in that I expect it to be full of like visual acuities and then lack some, sometimes in the story telling department, but hopefully that proves me wrong, right? That it'll have both excellent story writing as well as deep imagery and symbolism and maybe some more colors. Like five, like can we get five more colors? It's like blue, uh, black, orange, and gray. Sometimes light, dull green. <laughs> like literally, I'm uh, watching these. It's like in the middle of a field, right? And it's just like dark, foreboding, green grass. That's like dull as can fucking be. Like it's been desaturated. Uh-huh. It's just funny stuff to me. Um, let's see here. So I got my, some of my other little list here. So they did announce Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is coming out uh, next That's year. Cool. I think we all knew um, it was coming, and, just didn't know when. Yeah. And they for sure confirmed Tails is going to be in it because the number two has the number uh, tail or has two tails attached to it. All right. That's cool. I think we, I think <laughs> so, that's needed. The only thing I thought cool. they, they might go for would have been Knuckles because of the whole Ugandan Knuckles <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. How. Uh, no, I heard what's his name though is not uh, no longer the original voice actor is no longer doing the voice. Really? Uh, but some people, are, yeah, some people are like they were okay with that. They actually wanted somebody that's done Sonic before. To I was gonna on, say he was wasn't like I, I was gonna ask if he had ever done Sonic before because he kind of just sounded like a '90s kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that, that voice is one I would attribute to just yeah. like a random '90s kid. Um, so maybe I would get a better Sonic uh, voice or original. That's what I mean to say. Original voice actor who's done the voice. Right, right. We don't while. want to insult him. Thanks, dude. Dollar Shave Puff. <laughs> um, let's see. So and then we also, which is weird. I guess not really weird, but uh, HBO Max has ordered a uh, adult orientated uh, Scooby Doo show, but it's going to be all based Velma, on Velma. Yeah, I saw the Velma and, stuff. Um, and Minnie, here's the thing: uh, if it doesn't have, the here's the thing: what do they mean, adult oriented? 
It just, I don't know. It, it's supposed to be Does an it origin have story. Blood? Is Bill, that uh, is that adult oriented or is it sex? It what is going on? Because like for I, me, that's I see just... it more of just like just stuff that kids really won't care for. Like you know, like probably there will be some maybe sexual jokes in there. Maybe there'll I'm, be jokes that will be like I don't know. I'm wondering well, if maybe it's like a mental kind of thriller thing. Like we'll see. I'm just I, wondering. I, I really it's like, is, is it going to be darker stories? No, I don't think they're going that way. With Mindy Kaling, I I don't. I think they. I feel like they're gonna. I don't know. I, I we'll just have to we'll see. Have to see I guess it's gonna yeah, go because this no is. I really don't know what that means yet. Though. To me, I guess, like I said, just as a show that's not really going to be for kids and like they're not going to be talking about things that like kids are going to be wanting to watch. I don't know. We'll have to just see, I guess, when they finally come out. Right. Like, I don't one. think we're going to have an answer, unfortunately. It's just one of those things where it's like, uh. Let's see here. Well, so what was your I, uh, your take on the news for Gina Carano uh, being finally for sure fired from. Well, uh, I don't. Disney. I don't. We try our best, right, not to get political on our shows. I feel like entertainment it's, at its best. No, it's it's relative, so we yeah. can talk about it. But I feel yeah. like entertainment at its best should be uh, totally objective, if you can help it. Now, totally mm-hmm. objective doesn't mean that you don't depict things, but it means that uh, entertainers, right? And I firmly believe this in many ways. So for people who take it offensively, including like you know maybe us, uh, people like us, I don't think entertainers are even remotely qualified to speak out on politics. They have most of them have zero understanding of true political climates of social economic, actual studies to understand what economics do to the country, what policy does to the country. Not a, most politicians aren't qualified to do that shit, let alone celebrities. Right. And Uh so it's not so much, uh, And once again, kind of pulling it back to other people who have been hit with kind of similar things, like when they told LeBron, shut up and dribble. Like, Uh I don't, you know, don't shut up and dribble, but inform yourself before you speak, right? And I think that's Uh something entertainers are not want to do because they're celebrities, right? So Uh they're they're up there. Having said that, uh, I always refer back to the basics of... uh, like where we live, right? We live in a f- a free capitalist society, and in free capitalism, yeah. your your but employer you decides. No, you're working for Disney. You just gotta it, understand it's, exactly, like, and that's the point: is it doesn't represent. matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> if what I if I agree with what she said or disagree with what she said, and it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what she says. She could say I like strawberry pancakes, right? And if Disney has said no fucking strawberry pancakes, you're fired. That's uh-huh. it's very basic like employment stuff, and so people's argument b- boils down to, well, Disney should have to continue employing Gina Carano no matter what she says. That's the ar- the counter argument, right? Of well, she shouldn't be fired, but that is because that's it's that's Disney's. like any job you work, right? You right. Know, like and that's any... it's exactly you can't just go up to your boss and say I think you're a, a jackass. Or uh, if your boss's favorite team is the Steelers, you just go up. All oh, the Steelers suck. They lost again. Like you can, but yeah, he might fire your ass. You, know, you yeah. call your fat your boss a fat ass every day. He may fire you. And so, while I do think that she has been the victim in a lot of cases of overt uh, social media abuse and pressures, uh-huh. right? Like she's been targeted by groups and things for maybe not agreeing with things and not being politically correct as opposed to politically yeah. incorrect, right? So and then again, different. it's like, you know, I give her, you know, that's her mind. That's her. And her, I totally I agree. That's fine with but me. But what she's but then... decided is she believes that her her personal views and opinions and the ability to say them outweigh the job yeah. that she is doing. Right. She has yeah. chosen. She has that right to freedom of speech. You don't have the right to remain in your job. Right. No one is required to employ you despite whatever you say that's that's not free for them right and so it needs uh-huh. to go both ways having said that um i didn't think she was the greatest actor to start with so it's not super big loss i liked her okay yeah i liked her in the series don't get me wrong she I was think good she in the series well. no, no, no. she wasn't but it wasn't because she was a great actor it's because she was a great uh physical uh mm-hmm. i guess actor but more of a stunt right she's very good in the motions and actions of fighting mm-hmm. and being in Star Wars, I thought she did a really good job at. Yeah, she used to be a uh, MMA, MMA fighter. fighter, which I didn't even know until someone told me. Oh yeah, they're like, yeah, 
And which is so funny because all the people talking shit online, she could probably just beat him up. You know what I mean? <laughs> which, you know, please don't beat me up, Gina Carano. I have opinions that I shouldn't be oppressed for either, right? <laughs> so, uh, and my opinion is that if you say something, then you face the consequences of your actions as long as it's not by the government. Oh, it's and not I mean, by the she government. was comfortable with taking that route, so I mean, I... The thing is, also, this is not <laughs> the first time, right? This Disney has verbally said, we have warned you, and, and came out and said, like, you yeah, cannot say I do things. remember this was a few months ago, and I do remember they were talking and about this, I, and then I think that that finally blew up. I think that that original situation was blown out of proportion, because that situation, I don't feel like was... Uh, I think was her kind of being targeted by people for not wanting to not mm. saying the things they wanted her to say, right? Mm -hmm. However, you are a public figure, and not just that, you are a product when you're a celebrity. You are a product that people buy, sell, and trade as a mm -hmm. figure. And so, Car uh, action figures. <laughs> right. And so, right now are, are through the roof because of this whole thing. Because yeah. now everyone's like, I want a car. I want a car. I'm like, uh, well. Okay. That ship sailed. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Like I said, and the messed up part is that they were like, my parents just watched season two of Mandalorian, right? Oh, yeah. Right after I told them this and that. And, and after talking with them, I was like, hey, you know, it's a real shame because she they were going to give her her own show. They No, they just, they discussed that. They literally said after they had fired her, they, they actually let out to the public, well, we were actually going to do a show with her, guys, and it's not going to happen no more. <laughs> yeah, everyone knew she, she up. was... She didn't everyone, want that Disney money. Yeah, she didn't want that Disney money. And that's fine. If your <laughs> principles are worth more than Disney money, good. Have that's great fine, principles. Yeah. I'm totally cool with that. But don't act like you're a marginalized part of society because of your political views. First of all, your political views are not something you're born with, right? You're, mm. you're, you're not born a Republican or a Democrat or a conservative or a QAnon or whatever. You were born a person, and then you choose to follow this political party. And really, I don't think you should choose to follow any political party because they're all garbage, and none of them really care about you. Um, but and you should say more loosely affiliated, right? Like I usually split my votes between libertarians, Democrats, and a couple Republicans or independents. Uh -huh. But you know, people nowadays, it's like a inside, right? Like it's like a religion. It's like being yeah. a person, but it it's isn't. It shouldn't too. be, your politics shouldn't be like your religion and shouldn't be like your race. They should not be a part of you. Politics should change day to day with the situation that you're inside, right? And so for her, I feel for her because I really think that she could have done a lot of work and good work for the Star Wars franchise. People like Gina Carano as evidenced yep. by the thousands of simps running to her defense. Oh, and them doing a petition for her to uh, have that, Disney that have her going, back on. That petition ain't going nowhere. Uh, but, I, uh, people are like, I'll cancel my subscription. I love the one where it's the Emperor. Oh, I'm afraid Disney Plus will be quite operational without your subscription. <laughs> like That's what some people are saying, that like Disney may have hired her back because they were worried about no, the no, loss of subscriptions and a couple no, other things. But know. People already unsubscribe as soon as the Mandalorian's over anyway. So let's not even <laughs> let's not pretend <laughs> that she's bringing a ton of value herself to the thing. She's mm -hmm. adding to value, right? But you could have replaced Gina Carano with Ronda Rousey or any other female fighter, like uh, actor actress, would have been just the same. Honestly, yeah. I don't see that there would have been a huge difference. Um, and once again, the Simps are gonna get so bent out of shape trying to defend somebody who doesn't know their name but at the end of the day she's still worth eight million dollars yeah she just signed she's doing Shapiro. another movie yeah, yeah she's doing uh, another... no one will ever see it but that's fine <laughs> that's it's fine you know she's no one will ever see those ben shapiro things but it's fine nobody nobody cares uh, what has he actually made now that I think about I it? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd ask you. I mean, it sucks, no, like it's, you said. It's oh, definitely well. I mean... something that is rough, uh, but it's it's the business, right? If you were so upset yeah. about this, I had better have seen you standing out for Kaepernick and for all these other people who have protested in uh, their job or their things and been fired, right? Because Kaepernick lost way more money than she did by getting fired from the NFL. Millions uh -huh. and millions of dollars. Not even close. And, you know, most pro most conservatives don't give a shit about that, right? That's fine. But it's the same concept. There's nothing wrong with kneeling, 
There's and it and you're not required to stand for the anthem. That's part of the great part of being an American, mm -hmm. right? That's supposed oh. to be your freedom of choice. But yeah, it, it really sucks because it's going to bring negativity to Star Wars in a time where it's just barely getting back from the pre <laughs> the, the, the yeah the post the prequel madness or the sequel not the, yeah. sorry, the sequel madness the sequel <laughs> madness which once again it, what I just had the conversation with someone the other day where they're like man I just hate it it's so badly written and it's like ah, you know, eh, it's, well yeah, it's just it's not it's that it's, you, for it's me right and... it's and that's the people are like oh this is nothing the problem is actually it's so much like old Star Wars the only Too things, much. yeah, it's so. And then there was characters that like they brought and they, and they didn't, didn't go do anywhere with them, right? And so we we talked about it the other day, me and somebody, and, we're, and I was telling them they're like, "Oh, well, this is so much better." And somebody's like, "Not objectively speaking, if you didn't have the first sets of movies, right, and watch this as its own set, it's a whole string of movie ties and runs in. The reason it's not good is it's rehashing things we've already done. It doesn't finish the premises it sets up." which is the same as a lot of the early Star Wars stuff. There are tons of premises or ideas that are set up and never explored again. Uh, a, a real good one that they didn't explore until recently is Boba Fett and all them, the bounty hunter run. Yeah. That is, until the books and stuff, was a huge unexplored piece of Star Wars character, right, that like people felt didn't get their just desserts. People felt like Boba Fett got fucked hmm. in the show with the Sarlacc, you know, or in the movies with yeah. the Sarlacc pit. And so, yeah, you know that you know. It's or, or so, Guido, crazy Guido, with that character. Guido you know? shot first, or he, there it's funny though. If you think about always... yeah, like he has no no film time, but yeah, he became one of the most popular mm -hmm. characters. Exactly, and because of that, right? And so if you look at that, it's very similar in in a way to uh, John Boyega's character. He's a character who does end up getting, or kind of in the opposite, that he gets his screen time, but because he never hits his arc, we're disappointed. And we want he talks to... about it too. No, and they kind he was, of fucked him over. Yeah, he was upset. Yeah, he was, was very upset. The, the, the simple truth is, having three the switch in directors was probably not a great idea. Going all back and forth in craziness. I understand they want like you know fresh ideas from everywhere around, but like maybe they really should it just have shouldn't just, have been uh, in the movie. It, it, it works in kind of TV like maybe shows. Marvel, like the Marvel kind of way. Because... They, but even then, and I think this is the big. Thing that Star Wars was lacking is Marvel, and it's the reason the DCU doesn't do as well either. Marvel has Kevin Feige to sit at the top and oh, run he's, the shit. He's, he's so yeah. good at it. Like, Even like now, people, like Black Widow, he's oh, saying yeah. like, "No, we need to have this come out theaters. We're not doing this on." He's like really fighting the back. No, he's very, <laughs> and he understands the, he understands the properties. That's something I think DC really didn't focus well enough on. Is they they put like business people and producers in charge. Kevin Feige was a Marvel person before going into the movie stiff. You know what I mean? He was already doing stuff with Marvel. So he knew Marvel. He understood the characters and the stories and how exactly to display them in a large, overarching, overtime right. epic. Yeah, and I, yeah, so it's just. Yeah, rough. maybe that's good. Like you said, like an overseer who just, you Someone know, who's makes in sure. Everything... You need to have a unified vision, right? Or else you mm -hmm. end up getting two different versions of the same Joker in the same universe. And then you're like, why? Why, why is, is he so different in this movie to this movie? Are these the same movies? Are these is the, this same the same people? universe? What's going on? <laughs> I'm fucking lost. But no, and so like I think people do and don't give Kevin Feige's due. They're always shouting him out, but they really don't understand how much of the success of the MCU is due to him. I believe. Now, obviously, I'm not trying to take away from the Russo brothers and all the other directors who have, like, put in for the Avengers and Taika Waititi. You know, these are all great and amazing directors who bring their own flavor to the Marvel Universe. Right? But That's why we need John Farova. He needs to do, he needs to do Star Wars. <laughs> right? Just let's let him it. take over all of Star Dude, Wars. Dude, let John Farva do it. He's He's got it. I, I keep telling, and I just told someone yet last night, and I'm 100% I'm about this. Give DC to fucking Kevin Smith. Yeah, he's, I, he's, you know, I know there's a lot of people that really hate his writing and don't like him, but like I've always said, he's been good. Here's the thing: been great. he's made amazing comic book runs. If you've ever read, he's part of yeah comic with books. Daredevil. Yep. I heard Daredevil's one of the amazing, one ones. of the best ones. He's done some other good ones too, but he's usually a wacky writer, right? But that's not why you bring Kevin yeah. Smith on. He's not supposed to be a writer. Kevin Smith, Kevin Feige is not a writer for the fucking MCU. I don't believe. I think he's just a producer. He's, I feel like he's just. 
isn't he not the president of Marvel uh, Studios? He is, but that's what I mean. Is he's just in charge of producing? He's yeah. not. Let, let's see. What does Kevin Feige actually do? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what exactly does Kevin Page do? Marvel Studios read it. He may not directly script. He's just every creative decision. Uh... Or would you call it? I mean, a director? He, yeah, creative uh, director. It's just it. Yeah, he, creative he, director. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, he, I would. He's the same way that Hickman is right now in the X Men. Hickman yeah. doesn't write every X Men title, but every X Men title has they to get to his go ahead. First. Yeah. Right. And so. It was, uh, it's, it's one of those things where he doesn't need to write good scripts, right? That's not what he needs to do. He needs to be able to this read a script. Find the good people. Right. Well, that and to be able to read the script and say, yeah. this is good. This fits the overarching theme that we're putting up. And I think that Kevin Smith yeah. is easily knowledgeable it's... enough and, yeah. and yeah. Uh, open enough to direct the entire, or not, not direct, but direct but control the direction of the DC yeah. animated or not animated, but live action. He's already mm -hmm. done excellent work on the flash. He's done excellent work on Supergirl. He's directed in both of those shows. Some of the best episodes they've had higher, higher ratings on both of those shows, not than every other, but you know what I'm saying? Those are good high rated mm -hmm. episodes of those shows. And he is easily one of the most knowledgeable people on Batman in the entire world. Yeah. Easily ran. <laughs> yeah, he good. ran the go-to Batman podcast for twenty years or some shit. Fat Man on Batman was the go-to oh, yeah, Batman <laughs> podcast for years, and one of the original podcasts ever. So it's it's really tough to like knock his credentials, right? Like he has yeah. the credentials. It's likability and I just, direction. I just think people get a hate on him because he, they just you know, don't like him because like of because he's too fan. They say he's, he's too so, fanboyish. I'm like, bro, I don't but care. That's what that's you need. Me. The fanboys yeah. are the ones you want. You know, yeah, you know what I mean? Exactly. I, I, one of the one of my favorite ones is the uh, prep for Marvel superheroes and prep for DC superheroes. Prep for Marvel superhero or DC superheroes working out. And prep for Marvel heroes reading a comic book. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it, and I think it really should be something that every any actor worth half their chops should have picked up a fucking comic or a piece of written material on the character they're acting. Yeah, right? at least and, something. At least one of the good stories. And not, that and not even comics. Just like if you're playing Sherlock Holmes, read a fucking Sherlock Holmes book. It's not that hard. You know what I mean? It's an 18th or 19th century literature. Come on, or 20th century literature. Whatever. Uh, yeah. and so I really think that is what DC renegade on because i feel like zach i feel like snyder was their pick for that and it was a bad pick that's how i feel yeah and, yeah, I and see even that. worse yeah. to the point that they they let him direct most of the movies too mm -hmm. like i yeah, he did most pretty much all of them the, yeah, all three did. of them until wonder woman with patty jenkins and technically obviously didn't get all the way through justice do, league but Aquaman. his first two and man of steel and batman versus superman while technical commercial successes were not the blowouts they absolutely should have been the amount mm -hmm. of gross income from batman versus superman is like half of that of fucking uh the avengers if even whereas the joker made several times its budget easily right so it's it's not a dc property type problem obviously mm-hmm and so I can only boil down common denominators so far. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and the common de denominator in that situation is Zack Snyder. So <laughs> I, I don't think – I think well, Snyder – Well, he's done pretty much after oh, this. Yeah, I, we which, asked him, like, are you going to do another Justice League movie? After? He's like, no, I'm not. I'm done. I'm done after this. <laughs> he didn't even do anything for this one. He didn't even do anything. I mean, yeah, probably, not. yeah, I mean, probably just it was some already post even, That's stuff. what they keep fucking and everything claiming. everything was done. That's what they keep fucking claiming is that everything was done. So he really didn't do shit, right? That's what I kept He's saying, He's got yeah. 70 million to do VFX and four minutes of photography. Well, you know that's a lie. You know they you know did, like, all had fucking to do done. more lie. Yeah, he it had was to do so more done. You know what I mean? I'm so done with that. And once again, <clears> all they're proving to me is that he really did need four movies, four or two movies at least, right? Yeah. Four hours. To tell this story, what he wanted to do, yeah, yeah, right, which is fine, but and that's basically also Warner Brothers' fault for rushing along the once again trying to catch up to the MCU. I yeah. hated that you didn't have to copy them in order to do well, but you did have to have a plan. 
Something, yeah. Exactly. And, and the plan couldn't be, well, just throw fucking money at the problem because that doesn't actually fix problems. Well, and other good news, though, for DC, I'm at, I am excited yeah. that they're bringing back uh, Milestone. I did see they, that, and they got they static. Some new, uh, yeah, yeah, they showed some new designs. The new static static looks pretty good. Looks pretty great. It looks great. I, I liked it. I, I think just, it's really uh, urban and metro. Which is cool. Yeah, they just released uh, the Static Shock show right now on HBO Max starting today. So if you guys have not that watched that, out show, yet, huh? No, not yet. They just added, oh, and with the new Batman uh, 2000 show. So that was the one with like the monkey looking Joker. Yeah, uh, that, not yet, like I the long that hair, one, yeah. looking like Super Saiyan. The Goku. one voiced by fucking, <laughs> I think he was voiced by. You know, uh, he did okay. It was okay. He's fine, but... but it was once again, it was one of those ones where it's. It, I, it's mm. the same issue I had with the Jared Leto Joker. That's just not the Joker that I expect to see. Yeah. And and though it's Definitely a good trying to Joker, go a different route. and though it's a good Joker, right, in its own specific way, I can't say that about Leto's. I'm just saying that particular Joker was a good Joker in its own way. Mm -hmm. um, it is not the translation people were looking for. And I always say try not to expect things of your movies, but this isn't expecting things of a movie as opposed to expecting things of a character, which I do think is fair. Once again, mm -hmm. one of my biggest problems with Snyder Batman, not that he kills people necessarily, although that is still a big issue, despite however many people want to point at Batman comic number six from 80 years ago and say, well, Batman does kill. Yeah, he's probably done so like 20 times in his entire career in comics. And mm -hmm. most and of the ones... I had to be... To push him to his limit to get this. <laughs> the early ones were kind of casual and the ones that they count are usually like doesn't save them or accident like they must have died from this even though it doesn't show them dying from it right mm -hmm. so it's like oh he threw him off the building he must be dead i was like oh you assume that but we also live in a comic book universe so <laughs> for all we know he hit the ground got superpowers and became a uh, asphalt man i don't know <laughs> this is the magic so we so a lot of those are either contextual or bullshit right and in his in the vast majority of his 80 plus years, right, uh, or roughly 80 years in comics, Batman has had a no killing mantra, not mm -hmm. like not Pretty a head, not a rule, right? Very much in the same that Superman does not have a no killing rule; he just tends not to. They just they never talk yet, like so they never really talk about it. But it's just something that you never see him doing, so you just you get that idea, right? Like Batman and doesn't so, mess with uh, guns. Well, uh, <laughs> and that's the other one, Batman's actual phobia and severe mental yeah, and trauma that's with guns thing, right? is the if one that think got about me. It, he that's should not be holding any type of gun besides a grappling gun. That's the only thing I think of too when I always see of is like I always come to the conclusion that well why would he want to hold guns when there was a gun that it's there's it's supposed to be a huge thing in the comics. Huge on several occasions that he will not use a gun. Mm -hmm. Like see, maybe so, in the most most dire of circumstances but once uh -huh. again, Batman more than no killing is no guns. No no guns, right? No bullety guns. Like he'll do the grapple gun and he'll do like a, a gas gun, right? But bullets and guns are his trauma. That's his fucking character. And so when you take away something that is basically just a piece of the character in its entirety, right? It'd be like taking away the Joker's makeup. Yeah. It's just taking away something that makes that character vitally them. And so that was my biggest issue with Snyder's Batman. I also am not, I don't like Bale as Batman. I, I don't think he makes a good Batman or Bruce Wayne, but I've never Bale liked Bale Batman. either, but just because the voice or, no, is sorry, really uh, for me. Sorry, fuck that up. I don't like, uh, I can't even remember his fucking name. Affleck. I don't think oh, Affleck's, you don't like Affleck's I, he's, Batman. No, at all. Not even a little bit. He misses so many tones. I don't think he looks like the character of Batman. Like, for me, uh, absolutely, uh, Bale looked like Batman. Well, when he put the outfit on, I was like, okay, that looks the good. Outfit but, then, like, looks, it's, it's... but even then, he doesn't. He's so fucking big. Batman is never depicted as that wide at the hip. Yeah, he has the I know what they were trying to go for. They were trying, they were to, trying to go to for like night, they were trying the to go night for Batman. the biggest, most comic accurate Batman, and in well, doing they were so, they're doing the Frank Miller Batman. That's for sure. Yeah, and Frank and Miller's Batman's got that real like fucking fat body. He's fat man. Pot, yeah, Look, yeah, he, that's and, he, and he's supposed and to. I see what that's and he's supposed for, but... to depict the Batman who is older and out of shape. That's the whole yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Batman was yeah in the future. So when was, people uh... are always like, "This is the most accurate depiction of Batman," I was like, 
please point to me one piece of him that's actually comic book accurate to the to the general run of Batman and not to one specific story of Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, it, yeah, it, and I like it, said, I understand what really, they were doing, but just like I, yeah, I wasn't feeling it. Like and then the, good, uh, the other big one they talk about I is the uh, the warehouse fight. Uh, oh, you probably can't see it because oh, it's wait, all it was almost the... there. Yeah, but uh, it was almost there. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was like halfway. No. Uh, but yeah, it was one of my, the warehouse scene too. Is one where they're like, "This is amazing. This is why Bale should be." I the mean, Batman. that was cool. I, right, I but that's not him. The, that's the, the stunt scene, actor. But... That's not yeah. him. <laughs> so, oh no, no, no. That's fine. No, that's the only thing I, I mean? liked about it, like was the seeing fight scene Batman is finally absolutely his best some... scene. And obviously, the writing. I don't know. Once again, it didn't help that the movies surrounding the character BVS and, and Justice League did not meet my expectations of a superhero yeah. movie. So, I mean, they should have honestly did a Batman movie at least first before they did the BB. I, I could have even done without the Batman movie, but you did Wonder Woman and fucking Batman and BVS? Really? Yeah. It's, it was... Really? I, they were all and, over the place. And really with Doomsday. It. And Doomsday. And get, yeah. It was just badly yeah. written. You can try to tackle it from a bunch of situations, but it's rushed. It's rushed. It's there's no other way to explain it. It's rushing towards Justice League, mm-hmm. and that's why I have such a problem with it. Is right. that that movie yeah. should stand the test of time, both on its own and in the larger picture. Exa- yeah, exactly. Iron Man one is is good still, still yeah, to this day is a good movie. I'll sit down and watch it. It's a good standalone movie, like without having to know that there's gonna be more, more connections. Stuff, stuff. But it's just like, also oh, a movie on its own. But it's also so fun to watch as part of the bigger universe when you start pulling the little connections and all the yeah the predictions of what are to come. Like I forgot that they introduced Black Widow and Iron Man too. Yeah, so that I, I, I had when totally, I was watching it again but too. But it is what makes her appearance in the Avengers more palatable by having a minor role in an early movie. Same with Hawkeye. They're yeah. more palatable because we've had hints and information about them. And I wish they'd have done that with Wonder Woman instead, or with Batman versus Superman, instead of introducing Wonder Woman to come and kick ass and save the day. You know, just the idea of Wonder Woman, right? Maybe a scene with Wonder Woman, but she's in the movie heavily, like a lot of the time, a huge, huge portion of the time. Even at, at her best, Natasha Romanoff is a supporting character in Iron Man 2. You know what I mean? She gets one scene here, one scene here, one and scene They're always here. good scenes with her, though. Like, I, they always do their best to make it, like, the best scene. To be scene fair, you, if you throw her in leather, there's no way you can shoot a bad scene. <laughs> but no, but they um, always, like, did some really funny jokes with her when she would come in. She was always, like, the one that, like, oh, you don't F with her, like, you know, kind of girl. Yes, yeah, like, which is how, <laughs> and I think that's the other thing is an important characterization because it's so rough for me that, once again, not only did they introduce her Wonder Woman in that movie – then to like to spite then they gave her own movie anyway yeah which would have just been a better introduction into the story in between right don't do wonder woman in between bvs then her appearance in bvs not at all a problem right right it's not even close to an issue um and similar for cyborg and flash or or aquaman we get zero hint until Mm -hmm. justice league and that's just lazy you know, more than Definitely. anything. So I'm looking forward. Like I said, I want to see this Justice League with the Flash's backstory and with Cyborg's backstory and with more introductions for Aquaman and tie-ins because I do think it's what was missing. The problem with those movies is mostly that they're jammed together. Mm-hmm. You know, except once again, if even the, the res thing, right? One movie in between Batman versus Superman and fucking Justice League and suddenly Superman's death has more impact, has more weight. You don't have to spend 20 minutes at the start of Justice League explaining that the world's all fucked up without him because you had a whole movie of context to do it. Mm -hmm. But, and once again, it also hurts because, like, there were things that were exciting about uh. Well, no, yeah, when they first announced Justice League and all that, like, it was. I was pretty excited too, because like I'm not a huge DC fan, but I was like, oh cool, now I, I was, finally get to get some Superman, some cool man. Batman, some I was cool so Black, reticent Green just Lantern. Of I knew. I already knew that I didn't like Snyder as a director, so I like 
And then when they said Josh Whedon was going to help write it, I was like, well, let's see. Maybe that might be okay. That but might then be okay, now, but, like, all the it was, backlash it got, with him now. <laughs> well, even beyond that, like, even before that, he, he didn't make the movie any better by joining. No, he it. didn't. No, I mean, and Josh Whedon's in the kitchen. Kind of like this dad, he's kind of, he's kind of got this dad joke thing going on. For I, him I feel and... like he's definitely got that. I, I think he's maybe more of a creepy uncle vibe kind of thing going, but. I mean, now, now, yeah. <laughs> I didn't like him all that much prior. But once again, it's a difference between I mean, um, liking someone's yeah. content and their person. So, like, yeah. I, I wouldn't support Joss Whedon specifically, but I'm not going to not support something that he's on just because he's on it yet. Yet yeah. being the word. Once he, goes, once he gets charged, it's a whole other thing. Right. Hey. I mean, more people are starting to come up, like, even those Buffy it's, the Vampire people. No, it people seems like to, to be, and that's why I waited before commenting early, because I would have been like, oh, well, maybe they're just hating, but it's not, you never collaboration, know. You collaboration is the thing. Like, more people coming forward is a better sign that, yeah, he might be a fucked up asshole. And I'm, yeah. I'm not going to die. I don't know the dude. I have no fucking clue. I kind of got to go with what I hear until I hear something else, right? Like, right. as much as that's kind of hearsay or whatever, like, I kind of go, got to go with the fact that, yeah, like, Seems like he's an asshole. A lot of people say he's mm-hmm. an asshole. Uh, might be a fucking asshole, right? It's pretty simple. Right. And in the same, uh, in the same vein, I kind of feel bad for uh, Fisher because he's done the same thing as Gina Carano, but in a different, more positive way, I guess, because he's once again yeah. decided to stand up for good views and things. But exactly. Yeah. When exactly. you stand up to the studio, you get fired. That sucks. That's and business. you know, they, they may they may hire him now because of all this nonsense. I doubt coming. it. I don't know. We'll they, see. They'll never but sit then, back you on know, their laurels came, and apologize. You know what I mean? He came Companies. back and started saying even more stuff, though, is what I was hearing, too. So oh, yeah. I don't he's, know. They, he hasn't they, pulled off at all. They, he's fighting. So if he's so willing they, to come to an agreement and squash it, they'll never fire him back. Yeah. That, and not only that, why would you hire someone who's already given you problems? Yeah, it doesn't make I sense mean, as a business part. Like, if even if they yeah. were in the right, right? If some dude sues me for ten million dollars because he injured himself in my job, I'm never hiring him again. Gonna do something again? Yeah, yeah I'm never going to ask him to do anything. Even more minor the next time, maybe might not even be. Yeah, as bad, it doesn't but... even have to be as bad. He'll just say whatever because he's already done it once and succeeded, right? Or even if not succeeded, mm-hmm. he's tried it once. Once again, it that's a a numbers thing, right? That's business. That has nothing to do with morality. Yeah or any of that shit. The exactly, same, yeah. same have with to the Kara, see their money. And that's the same with the, the, I want people to remember for my thing with the Gina Carano thing is like, I don't have an opinion on whether this is right or wrong. Uh, what I do have to say is it's totally legal. And if you don't like capitalism, then maybe you should try to uh, do something about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's just capitalism, baby. Get used to it. So, before we head off too, because it looks like we're yeah, getting there, but I want to at least uh, talk about Doctor Stone uh, season two just came back. Oh, up, cool, so nice! I'm so glad they're getting into up. stuff. The so they're gonna do the same thing that all the other anime do though, because I know because I started reading Doctor Stone before I started watching Doctor Stone mm-hmm. that when they started Doctor Stone, they were only a, maybe a hundred and something chapters into the yeah, manga. They're starting on the Stone Wars right now with this one, so oh yeah, the, they, see they're they're not that far off from the thing i think i maybe read a year or two ago so they'll maybe have another season maybe two sure. before they catch up yeah. but definitely only not more than that uh and i i and, doubt uh, even that in the same way that uh kind of attack on titan has caught up uh black clover is very much on the edge of its but uh, that one they're taking a, a hiatus well so they I have to <laughs> Yeah, they, they, just there's said, nothing else to write. They've it already really caught dumb. up. They should have. They should have honestly just waited instead of putting out those like four episodes to start the new arc out. I just keep like, telling people like so why they, now that you get it, now you get all like have, oh have like, the I gotta wait. slightest bit of patience because this is exactly what happened to the big three Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. You have such amazing stories and you want to capitalize on the money for them, but they're not fucking finished. So you get to the fucking catch up point and you have to do filler. Well, or do and then one of thing is just like that's just the way they're they're that they see. You, okay, I see the Japanese a little anime different because I see them as like instead of doing toys like the Americans did, you know, hey, we gotta have toys to do our shows and we get more money with the toys. Yeah. Well, the, the, they do it the flip side where they're like, 
well, we got to have manga, and to get more manga, we got to have these anime shows that do that. <laughs> so we got to do more manga. And <laughs> yeah, so it's very much I, I see like it, their, their way is different with just they're more focused on the manga, and their mangas, they're making their big money. And no, and they, it, they both make money together, but they do, still. But their but. manga is definitely, once again, uh, looking, I had been, I was blown away looking at uh, the sales charts because when you compare them to American sales charts, Jesus, man. Uh, yeah there's a lot of a lot of asians <laughs> oh yeah i know it's just you know what it is it's just um i don't think we'll ever go to like that type of style either of like where we do volumes and stuff we like, do you know. just not in a I'm, generalized because if you did. think about it they're the real thing i think they have going for them that's kept them so popular and made them so popular is shonen jump yeah shonen jump for sure a yeah new chapter of 25 to 26 collected comics from lots of different artists Think about how awesome that would be to get a DC jump. Yeah. Just the best stories from all the DC artists this month. And then next week it's a new set because it's a new set of – because that's how just Shonen works is it's usually one week uh, this and this and this and then next week this and this and this unless you're like One Piece or something and do every week. But, yeah, I was blown away. I, I, I was reading I, one chart. It was like 2016 where the, the, the top – manga had outsold batman and superman by like 10 times as much it was random and it's wild. just yeah there's just way more people that read well, out there it's, i they think have, it's coming up have too. way more yeah that too and then they they have just way more, more like yeah. manga stores as oh, well too like uh, yeah. there's bookstores everywhere over they just there have like, whole stores dedicated to shows too there's one piece stores naruto stores yeah, yeah. You'd be, you're never gonna find more than one batman store in america come on no no um, and, and we I love mean, batman and superman but it's just not we how we do things. And I, I think it's culture. I think it's a we, yes, culture. Yes, I think we just have yeah, a culture thing where people like – it's almost like a stigma kind of thing. I where think it's like, definitely a stigma. stigma. Cartoons, like, oh, you read comics? Even, like, who reads even comics, comics, right? It's it's <laughs> comics, cartoons, anime. We consider these things childish, right, in America, like as a culture. I'm not personally, yeah. but – which is so funny because if you want to – you know, if you think anime is for kids, you should drop your kid off and watch some Attack on Titan and some Made in the Abyss and have a great day. You know what I mean? Um, or any number of really. Or Promise wild, Neverland. Like, Promise show Neverland. Them out, show, them, show them the first episode Monster, of that one. That'll be, you can that'll be do, done. Um, you can do Monster, Dora Hedoro. Uh, I could name them, right? Berserk, fucking Demon Slayer. Just keep going all day with messed up anime. Yeah, that Demon Slayer episode where the, the actual demon boss is killing her own. Yeah. Like, demons is really brutal, that scene. <laughs> there's some but, yeah. Ones, but, yeah, so seeing that and then just seeing how they maintain their kind of uh, longevity, right? Like it's 20, 30 years now they've been doing this. And yeah. increasing in sales, not decreasing. So I think the medium is just going more worldwide. It's becoming more palatable for everybody. And so it's hitting Definitely, that yeah. Uh, the United States is uh, for sure even like accepted anime and manga a lot more. A lot uh, more than it used to. Have. Especially still just because pop culture has become more more popular and I think just everyone's yeah. more accepting of these things. And Well, I think it's become that. a more available thing. Like, that too, yeah. More, and then maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just because it wasn't as available to people. I think it so really was. You know, didn't back know in the day, that they were anime or nerds with Inside until they actually. No, I really think that because I I see people who are like, man, I've been missing out on this. Or I don't watch this, and I think, yeah, and I think to people. back in the day where it's like, well, yeah, they only had like ten channels, and there was like sports on one channel, you, and I, I remember how to record my. Or I remember one time there was a Dragon Ball Z episode yeah. where they were fighting Kid Boo, and I told my mom, I was like, you have to let me, we have to go to the party. She's like, no, you have to let, let me, me stay. This is the this. last episode right here. And I can't, I have to watch this. And so we stood there for like another 20 minutes. Bro, and I was like, again, thank the, you. <laughs> and, and that's the other thing is the me, the type of medium consumed, right? I find myself definitely doing a lot more streaming than I used to, or watching more streams than I used to. Which, yeah, definitely. Which is wild to me because I always think it's very much like the reaction thing is it's kind of like uh, it's it's wild, right, to just watch people do things or watch. But when mm. you once again when you think about it, well, what is what is sports? What is football? Well, you just watching dudes play football. Yeah, you could go play football. Exactly. But and then someone said, well, why do you watch this guy play uh, football when you can go out and or play video games? We could just play yourself. It's like, well, why do you watch? football and you just go play football yourself because they're really good at it <laughs> that's why i said it's because i suck and i like to watch them whoop some like they're <laughs> really good at it i enjoy it and, and very much in this, another way i think that with the availability of screens screens being everywhere in our lives and being our portal to communication right like shit me and you haven't seen each other in months 
yeah. in, in person, right? Because of COVID partially. And also, you know, it's just uh, easier. To, it is that. easier to do it this way. <laughs> Uh, but you know, we're sticking with it was COVID. That's like, <laughs> no, but I mean, and, and to be fair, a lot of it is even beyond that, right? Like the ability to connect farther in the world. Like I can connect with people in Argentina and Somalia and Australia through the screen in seconds. And so now uh-huh. everything's more available. Everything's more connected. We feel more connected with each other, right? Like uh-huh. I care more about what someone's doing because I know about them, right? Like uh-huh. For instance, if you didn't know there are starving children in an area, well, you can't care about them because you don't know about them. Uh-huh. But once you know about them, you're like, well, well, shit, there's starving children in such and such place. That sucks. And I think it really is the first step in like connection is just knowledge and interacting. And then after that, because media is the relation of interaction, right, and knowledge and getting – that's all media really is in any form is the sharing of ideas and information, right? Uh-huh. Whether it's music, comics, uh, movies, etc., I have an idea that I think is funny or sad or interesting, and I want to share it with you. So it's very much a con- media itself is a connective uh, thing, and I think by becoming more connected, as co- a world media is naturally rising up. You know what I mean? Because it's more connected, and we connect through it. Uh, I think like TikToks, sharing TikToks, things like that, crap. Uh, memes are another huge one where we develop our own social dynamic through the internet right but uh, i mean there's all kinds of stuff we could talk about about why it's more popular now but i definitely think it is popping up there and i'm excited for all these new anime coming out one thing that's great is the anime's train did not stop that much i thought it was for sure gonna take a heavy hit uh but it, yeah, look, I'm, I'm glad that yeah they're still doing pretty good over there yeah for, it's it's nice it's definitely nice to see things going well you know what i mean uh mm-hmm. and i i want the same thing for like the medias that we like like comics and stuff to continue making because i really feel like there's still room in the world for comics right like yeah still yeah they're uh, pff, like this uh, that's why a lot of these uh, movie companies are going to comics now because they're like they've run out of freaking ideas and they're like well we didn't know that there's like these crazy minded like stories out there that mm-hmm. were being written well, over and, here. And it's not a <laughs> we want in on that money now. Now, now we need the money. It is really it is money. But yeah, I, think, I mean, because yeah. you can you get really crazy things like farmhand. Oh, yeah. Um, that's that one where he's a farmer and he's growing organs that like are used as uh, transplants instead. Yeah, like, I mean that's that, becoming a show for com- AMC here yeah, soon. Comics are definitely the one of the last bastions. Anime and comics, I think, are some of the last bastions of free, independent. Uh, of, like your television. imagination, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you they're, get, they're not, especially when you have image, where they're that's what they want you to well, do. They and, want and that's what I was going to say is more independent comics, maybe not DC and Marvel necessarily, but yeah, anime in general or manga and comics in general, right? Like Image, IDW, uh, all these other Boom, yeah. Dynamite, all these new studios coming up with some amazing titles a lot of the time, right? Not what some new studios are coming out like. Um, we didn't AW talk Upshaw, about, uh, Aftershock Comics, I, I think Magic about Studios. I think about how even within the last couple of years, my list, right, is different because of all the new publishers going down. Whereas before, it would be maybe this week I have Marvel, DC, Image, and uh, Valiant, mm-hmm. and then now it's like I got at least eight Oni Publishing or Press or whatever. Uh, you know, just a huge list of new publishers, which I'm, which is possible because of the new. Uh, media right and the new tech mm-hmm. and all this pulling and pushing and so it's interesting and i can't wait to see it go hopefully and improve the comic industry i hope yeah i really hope i mean the only ones that seem to be struggling right now and it sucks is dc right now are well, not doing they so made some bad i keep hearing choices. rumors of like like the comics are gonna shut down i mean i don't think that's gonna it's gonna come to that where comics Here's the are thing, shut down. they would never shut down they would sell out right they would sell to oh, yeah. they would sell to Marvel or Disney or they would sell to Image or somebody or Crunchyroll or Sony, right? Somebody would buy the property. It wouldn't just go. It's too much. There's too much still money left that actually can be made from these properties. Yeah, I just hope they they finally get their I because to get their I, stuff I together because about Future State wasn't all that great. I heard some people. I still have to it. check it out. I've heard mixed bag reviews, which is usually not a good thing in comics. If it's not overwhelmingly positive, then you're in trouble. <laughs> and then we'll see how they do with this whole 
which was we knew was it was 5G from the beginning, but now they're calling this generations or something like yeah. that now. Um, but like, Nobody yeah, they're cares. doing like they're they're doing like you know switching. Here's the thing: if they were smart, Batman, what Flash. they would finally do is another Marvel crossover. It's time. That'd be cool. I would like another. They, they <laughs> hint, they've been hinting. They've, talked they've about been it. hinting they at it a lot in several comics. If if you read lines and you paid any attention to like way comics are written, you know what I mean? And I know you've seen them as well. They've been leaving hints kind of or like teasers yeah. in case they want to, I feel like. Like they don't have any set, but I think they're like just in case. I'll pen this mm-hmm. in. Uh my big one that I remember is uh the Thor one, you know, a god, oh, a god of light in the yeah. yeah, where he's like uh but there's other examples absolutely, you know what I mean, where um Quicksilver passing into the Speed Force was one. If you remember mm-hmm. that whole thing from what was it, No Surrender, or was it after that? It was one of those. Two. I, I remember that one, yeah, as well. Um, oh, be, before we go, I guess. Sorry. Um, no, you're good. I guess this is. Uh, what, what was it? Did you watch Wandavision? Uh, yeah, I knew there was something I want to talk. It was good. I thought I like they do I like so the Halloween episodes. good. I like all the, Halloween episodes. Yeah, Halloween's <laughs> really fun. <laughs> I will say I think it did lack a little bit in the actual Halloween esqueness, but it's yeah. But that's kind of natural because it's overshadowed by the big story they've been telling, yeah. right? So it's not that bad. And there's still it was some a cool fun way for them to add in like a, a homage. I don't, though, I like don't know if you classic. noticed what show they based this one off of. Oh, Malcolm in the Middle! I really, yep. as soon as as soon as they did the intro, I was like, the "That's intro, Malcolm in the Middle." It's Malcolm. I knew it. I was like, "It's fucking Malcolm!" And then they did the fucking. Uh, they made. Uh, Billy do the talk to Cam, mom and dad. Have been oh, playing. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I, as soon as they did that, and I was like, "This is this is Malcolm." Oh, I, I like you said from the opening, I was like, a hundred percent positive, and then that confirmed it. You know what I mean? It was the actual like, yeah, this is. There's no other. You could try, but there's no other one. And they did that in a couple places. They did that there. They did that in the flashback with Wanda and Pietro. Oh yeah, that was absolutely a Malcolm in the Middle flashback. Because it had made no sense and was totally random, um, and it, and then I was like, "Oh, they had trick or treating in Sokovia." Yeah, <laughs> and then, right. that's exactly what you think. You just think a dumbass thought of that. Why'd you give him a fish? Um, but I thought it was really well written. They're so hinting it. They they they've written it very well to leave it open, which I think is yeah. great. Because really, any they, they, anything could happen right now. This could be Pietro. This could not be Pietro. This could be a villain. This could. We have no goddamn clue. And well, we just Funko saw already, um, did they, already did they uh, spoil it. They already, yeah, they kind of spoil some stuff. There was a Mephisto Funko Pop already being released for Oof. the Wand Division. So, so that, so that we're pretty much confirmed that. Yeah, there's gonna be I hate Mephisto. that's one of. But my we have most... no idea who it is. I mean, we. I think we got a pretty. Yeah, cool. look it up. You can see it already. They they yeah, already have all their Funko up. That's fucking awful. I hate that so much. I mean, it's, it's understandable the, because no, they have to have these things ahead of time. To if they have to production. fucking have them ahead of time, then do a better job of keeping them under wraps. It's you're but it's losing, hard, man. Like there I are so many you'll lose sales based on the early release. Like I, it is, I won't buy anything from this show now. I know it sucks though, but it, it really is hard to keep things under wraps. The, I don't know why. The thing is, like, the, even like my with problem new is with their boys. new production style, it should not be an issue to produce these after the reveal. Yeah, they that's true. have the ability to produce produce thousands of these a day yeah Easy. and then you know it's the same thing with like marvel or marvel legends and stuff like that like and even the star wars stuff like we we know about star wars figures like three months before they're going to even announce oh, it yeah, to us. We, we're already guessing and they have they do their their best to kind of like hide it from us like they, they even like when they, they put them on the, the when they put it on the websites they actually put like a secret code name though they'll, they'll name it something not even close to star That's wars they'll call they it name. i forgot water blue or I something forgot. water green or but then we end up figuring i don't know how these people do but they end up figuring it out what it is and it's it's crazy i, I mean i don't understand how hard that could be they kept the, the I, secrets I, back in the day i don't no know goddamn problem, i really don't know why yeah i, I seriously don't now. know it, it's it's sometimes to the people you hire you know you don't know who's taking pictures and and freaking so how, stuff. Like, and, well, and that's why you have any NDAs or whatever. But yeah, you're supposed to. I, they got to lock it's, it down. It's hard dude. to say how they, this they, stuff happens. And I, but... I swear to God, I don't know how they could possibly get this. Like, there should only be a certain number of people with access to this. Yeah, there should only be a certain. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's got to be. It should really that... only be up to marketing. Honestly, you should only have that at that's first so because they're the ones that are going to be. Once again, you, you know, just don't need any of the info on it until it's now. 
It really, like, but yeah, back in the day, you needed time, right? They didn't have the machinery and the technology to produce this shit on hand. They do now. They have the, they, we have 3D printing technology that far exceeds the needed capacity to do this. It, it just that, pisses me off to no end that they're still using that excuse of we have to do it before it's released when that's just not the case in almost every other product they make. Like, yeah, most stuff yeah. is made on demand that day shipped out it takes a little longer like a week for shipping but once again this is at least a week early well then i think too what doesn't help is that a lot of our stuff and toys are all made in in china that probably <laughs> hurts us, that time doesn't help too you never know maybe that's still chinese gonna be, people over there no no that, and that probably is an issue and at least harms the security chain but once again that's on the company that's yeah, them no, fucking true. up yeah, you, you you know what I mean. You guys make I know they make tons of money. I know Funko mm -hmm. Pop makes an excessive amount of money. Oh I yeah, to you, they no, make no, no. Millions. yeah, they, they do, they do. So and they, they, you know the the excuses are always just so bullshit to me. Where it's just like, well, we just can't do this because it's not price effective. Well, not price effective because you don't want to make less this year, or not price effective because you actually well, can't do it. Now lately, like they make they like come out with like like once this, something's popular, like like they milk the shit out of it, like. <laughs> Yeah. Like when Baby Yoda was coming out, like literally, the, I think there's like right now maybe 10, 12 different Funko Pops oh, yeah. of Baby Yoda. Absolutely. Right now. <laughs> and they'll buy them up like hot coin or hot cake. It's, it's so funny to me because it's the exact same as Beanie Babies. It's you know, and Beanie Babies were good for a minute, but like I don't see Funko going anywhere because it's not based on like characters we don't know about. I do These are characters you grew good. up and love but on. I don't, and have I don't for. see a lot of the actual value being in the pops. Like they're, the value is it, for the company and selling them, right? Like I yeah. think that much like comics and stuff, it'll be a seclusionist market. Well, I, you know, there, there's a lot of Funko Pop collectors out there. Like, yeah. there's more Funko collectors there than there is lot, uh, yeah. toy action figure collectors out there. And and some of these pops there go up for of, ridiculous there money. There were a lot like, of Beanie uh, Baby collectors, too. I'll just remind you that. And they used to get yeah, quite a too, bit yeah. of money. <laughs> so but they just... have about, um, I think the some of their most expensive pops are almost about 50, almost $1,200 is one of their most expensive ones. Um, but yeah, some of these ones go pretty up in price. I mean, they try to do that same thing where it's the collector's kind of thing where once it's done, it's done. We won't try to make it again unless it's one of the common ones they, they usually do all the time. But um, I hope Funko does stay around for a while. You know, I like their unique I, kind I of like with big old bu bubble uh, heads and big bulbous eyes. And um, and then they, they do good now on some of the newest stuff that they come out. Like they're, they're kind of stretching out on some of the sculpting work and adding more like – detail work to the, some of their you know their pops and so um those are the usually the ones i usually go for or like the more unique ones that like aren't really the ones they make too much so yeah it's, like a, those. it's a 686 million dollar business i don't want to hear they can't meet their production quotas yeah it's, yeah this is not really it's like buy some more fucking printers bitch but, other than that, yeah, I mean, it's been, it seems like it's confirmed that we're having Mephesto, but it's the thing I think is, we all where knew is he it was gonna like, be who is he playing, if he's we, even playing anybody, we all knew or if he's it was just doing everything in the background. I think, yeah, yeah. Any, well, anybody who read the comics knew it was going to be, everyone yeah, was that, screaming yeah, Nightmare, and I was like, no. This well, is there's somebody his. else that was actually saying that Nightmare, but they were saying, um, he was another Cthon? demon. Cthon, yes, Cthon. I could yes, see Cthon being because that's her, but once again, that's pulled straight from her story. That's her mm -hmm. uh, demon. That's but like Elder God Funko, that powers her. Yeah, Funko went ahead and said to all that and said, it's Mephesto. <laughs> yep, yep. But once again, we, we kind of knew it, especially once they brought in the twins. It was very heavily implied that it was going to be I'm Mephisto. I'm curious if they're going to keep those kids around. Like, Here's, are we going to see a Young Avengers with them? Or are we just uh, like, are they going to be disappeared at the end of the right. show? Right, are they going to be just like in the comics? Um, my real question is how they're going to do the whole MCU mutants with this. Or if they're just going to tease us again. They like could. They, did they could easily, easily. They could just you know? tease us. Yeah, they could tease the shit out of us. And especially with Mephisto, they could tease. But maybe they won't do the – maybe this is a good time to do – ah, no, I wouldn't say that. I was going to say the Fantastic Four since they did We've confirm that they're going to do that. Yeah, and there have been people who have been hinting that this might be that as well, but I just don't think it's the time right now. I think the Fantastic I, Four needs to be built up in the movies. I don't yeah, think they're a TV yeah. show kind of. Yeah. But I, well, maybe I'm wrong. 
yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, other than that, that's pretty much all I say. I mean, I, I like the WandaVision this episode. Like, I loved all the classic, uh, um, like, outfits that they all got to wear. It was cool it to was see. It was so like, fucking such a trip to see him. And I came in with his outfit. I was like, I should have known. You know what I mean? And then later when you get the kids' powers, I was like, yeah. I, I kind of knew that was coming. But at the same time, to see it and how yeah. it implemented in that well-written way is different than knowing something's coming right you can know that luke is going to beat vader but watching him beat vader is what the fun is yeah and, exactly and this was very much that i thought there was some really good effects it was such good acting from like uh paul bettany as vision and uh you know so many good written lines right like what happened to your accent what happened to yours <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean just there's such good twists and plays the little things but i think you're right i think that's pretty much all we've got uh maybe next week we'll touch up more on comics but i think we're good for today and we'll have to catch them next time on uh comic convos yeah Alrighty. sounds good yep have a good one everybody if you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel remember to attack that like button subscribe on youtube follow on twitch or join our discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams we know we're not perfect and we can always improve so please visit our discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves finally if you're just starting for more content you can become an honorary member of 3d productions at patreon.com 3d and get a exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.